In the Colonel Senior Secondary School where we study, students in the school, every decision made was to be endorsed by us, whether it was the headmaster or any teacher. The department said was studying literature. And Wallace, well, a British man, was asking us to act the Shakespeare's play, Romeo and Juliet. We had a conflict here. We wanted to do it the way we interpreted it, but he wanted us to do it the way Shakespeare wrote it. And we said, we have our stories about love, which Shakespeare was writing about, and we want to do it in our own way. Africanize it, you can analyze it. The battle started. And as the battle started, the department said, as we were called in the school, by the names of... My name is... Uh -huh. <laughs> writers in the days then, they were the African writers series. They used to bring in these books and read all of them, trying to find out how best we could present Romeo and Juliet. The books were read. So many of them, the names of? God is bits of food, Usman Sembeni. Uh -huh. The Outsider by Albert Camus. Big Troy in the city by Pass B. A. Booker. 30 years old, Banana by Alex Mukuru. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great expectations by Charles Dickens. Six all apart, Chinua Achebe. River between, which was the young. Lion as a jewel, one No longer at ease, Chinua Achebe. Stay with me, Ayobami Adibayo. And I see Romeo and Juliet. Not forgetting Return to the Shadows by Robert Serumaga. It looked like and apparently it was like returning to our own shadows mm. to do Romeo and Juliet the way all us wanted us to do it. The battle began. We started our rehearsals in spite of the disagreement. We started our rehearsals in the so-called botanical gardens in Colorado Senior Secondary School. 
and during science subjects, because we never studied science, because we thought in science it don't take, because two plus two in science is four, and two plus two in the arts could be five or six or seven. Just find and gather. Now, we say in the times of science subjects, we would go down and dance to our heroes, to our musicians. The music we wanted to be in Romeo and Juliet, the music of Ruan, Ruan, so Makia, the orchestra, Tutti Presse, or Mario, and Ruan, no, Matabiti, or whatever, Kiambukuda, orchestra, Vive, Ndona, Tabli. However, the song that really took us on was Calypso. We danced Calypso as we were in the botanical gardens preparing for the rehearsals of Romeo and Juliet. He came and found us in the botanical gardens, in the botanical gardens dancing. And he was here to research about music in Africa. He found us rehearsing Romeo and Juliet, and I, of course, welcomed him in. He wanted to know the kind of music we do. Right away, as the department said, we took him to the book of Usman Sembele, God's Beats of Wood, to show him the type of music we have in Africa. In that book, Sonkara is a character who Sembele writes about as a hungry man. Six days, seven days, Sonkara had gone without food. And he knew that men live six days without food and die, women live eight days and die. So Kari knew he had only one day to live. And he went, looking for food. So hungry he was, that he looked at garbage, a heap of garbage, trying to find out what he could eat. He saw these big birds spreading their wings, that's which we call Karoli here, <laughs> eating everything there was in the garbage here. So Karl envied them, but he knew he could not even eat them because they are dangerous birds. So I said that if you eat one, you die immediately. To let go. And so Karl was looking at the garbage to find out whether any rich man put something in there which they didn't need, but so nothing. The birds had eaten everything. However, all of a sudden, he sees a very big rat, a big rat, which we call here in Sombabiuma. <laughs> and Sonkara knew that this was now a matter of death and life. He either eats it or dies. He prayed to God with all his energy. Holy God, who made us to me and all things else to worship thee, keep me feet in mind and heart, God and soul to take my part. Holy God, what my life did me on with a kind of light. Slowly, went to the rat. Messi rise to the rat and camouflaged himself in such a way that the rat should not think that he was an enemy. Slowly, the rat stopped and sunk. <laughs> Want 
Violence might be cursed. Do you think it's blessed or cursed? Both. We are both blessed and cursed. Blessed because of what we have in terms of climate, weather, trees, rivers, mountains, and everything. Cursed because of what we have done with ourselves because of the God. We are killing each other. We are killing each other. So what other garbage the the West brings out? Loops of garbage you have brought here. Christianity. Christianity. But you have faith, right? Yeah, but there's a difference between faith and Christianity. Christianity is your culture plus the faith. Faith removes the sin from a community. But you brought your culture and the faith, which we call Christianity, as the department said, we are trying to convince all us. When you tell me love your wife so bad that you kiss her seven times a day, that's Christianity because you are putting in kisses now. Which kisses are your culture, not in the Bible? I guess. You guess? Yeah. Do you kiss? I, I do guess. Yeah. Why? Uh, because I love someone? You mean? Yeah. We don't love because we don't kiss? Oh, oh no, I would never dare to say that. That is, that is not what I said. Out of the country, Uganda must be for Uganda's only. I give the Asians only every day to pack up and go. Don't try to look like two Africans by blackening your skin with shoe polish. After my deadline, uh -uh, you will see what will happen to you. Ah, yes, follow me. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mohammed. Yes, sir. Take that away. It's now yours. Thank you, General. Katumba. I know you like food very much. You can have that poster over there. <laughs> that one. I want this one. Yes? This one, General. Katuma. Come. Come. Yes, sir. Katuma. I'll give you this. You want the other one? Ah, who was this show? 
Men and women want free things. We have now failed to understand the ethic, ethics of work. We don't want to work. We want everything given free since that day. As soon as we got that, those properties, no one really works hard enough. We want it free. So, Idi Amin had quite a, quite a bad influence on Uganda then. Yeah. Would you, would you say that this is the worst thing that he did then? No. You can't say what worst or best Idi Amin did. Some people think he was okay, others think he was not okay. The people who, who died in his regime, some people think they were killed by people who were fighting him. And other people say he's the one who killed them and everybody's kind of upsiding everything, upside down up. So we don't know. His story will prove whether he was or what he did was or best. As far as I'm concerned, I don't know. Because there are so many things spoken about Idami. However, one thing I know for sure, the Bible says that if you don't bless Israel, you are not blessed either. Either me kill the Jew. The Palestinians hijacked Jews and broke them in Italy. They sent ten men in their commando, like ten men only came to Entebbe and rescued all the Jews and took them back home. Idamin was so intimidated for ten men to defeat 25,000 soldiers. He ordered the woman who was left by the name Dola Brook to be murdered by his soldiers. Dola Brook was murdered. So, in other words, we didn't bless Israel. Who knows? Perhaps it is the curse. We still suffer today. <laughs> <laughs> As an old man. Yeah, back then he was a young man. So he marched to the bush to go again to liberate us with a very good idea. How can someone rule for 10 years a country 
Wonder said, he done in 10 years. <laughs> so we all said, yeah, there he is, our savior. So he marched to the bush. To reclaim the votes we stole because of what we learned from Amin, to steal. And he came, he wanted to liberate or reclaim those votes, to bring them back so that his people we should be liberated. And of course he did. However, for us, as the department said in the call, trying to convince others, we went to the way. This time, we shed more blood than ever. Forget the blood of the gun, forget the blood of the faith, forget the blood of the Indians. So how many people died there? 400 of them. And it flowed even to Rwanda. 1994, it became a genocide. We wanted us to know that. When the department said, we took him to the way to get empirical evidence of the blood that was shed. And that much blood not bringing us together was a question in us. While blood of Romeo and Juliet, just young people brought them together, the Catholics and the Montagues, here was us with all that blood since the gun, never together. We hate each other. Do you? Yes, <laughs> we hate each other. The Banyangoli hate, the Baganda, the Baganda hate, the Chuku, the what, the Arus, the Arus hate, the Madis, the Madis hate, the Banyo, the Banyo hate, the Bachiga, the Bachiga hate, the Banyangoli. The Banyangoli hate, whoever the Basoga hate, whatever, the Bachiga hate, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> We want to watch this to show all us the skeletons of the people that were killed during that. See that? Skeleton of Rutramaguzi killed him because he couldn't show where he was. Who, where, who was? Huh? Who did he hide? <laughs> Are you a spy? <laughs> you, you have to understand, okay? There is a prison here called the Chitalia. <laughs> Who wants to go there? Let us get that. See, Nara Wolf. Nara Wolf was in the face of water. She was found with the jerry cans and they thought she was going to fetch water to give to the guerrillas and she was... <coughs> That's her skeleton. Chiwege. Chiwege. Chiwege was a drunkard. At night, singing, the woman gave her woman. <laughs> that is his skeleton. Died drunk. <laughs> Lose you. That one has no legs. Yeah. The late Kassidi Kwanga told me that he found once upon a time a dead soldier with the boots, which he thought would fit him. And he had no boots as a guerrier. So he cut off the legs. That is private with you. Then, why are you running away? You run away from bones. I'm a goofer. That one. You see? has no head. Where is his head? Who knows? Chihudu? You see? Kaira? Not the Kaira you know. 
that was private career. <laughs> she died the teaching. Scary. Scared. Very scary. Are you scared? Well, scary, scared. scary stuff. Scary is part of our music. <laughs> <laughs> we are always scared. Yeah. And it is interesting. That is our music. We live our music. And then what else? for once accepted us to have a compromise, to lose some and win some. So were you allowed to put in the, the conflict, the war? The what? The war. Were you allowed to put it in? Ah, the war. Yeah. yeah. We had to put it in, to please him. We had to sugarcoat it in such a way that he wouldn't be offended. It shouldn't be very, you know, like what do you call little, little, so that he yeah. would understand it and allow us to do it. <laughs> I solemnly swear that okay. this is not just a mere change of God, but it's a fundamental change. So, help me God. Now no good job. dancing today. Oh no. Tomorrow we might change. As I say, change is the only permanent thing in life. Tomorrow we shall change, of course we have to change. There will be another kind of music we shall lead to. But Lord has accepted us for the first time to have our stories in Lord and Juliet. Two said, fine. So we said, Lord, lose some, win some. We shall give you Romeo and Juliet, parts of it and parts of our story. So we started with the Romeo and Juliet and we chose the part of uh, when uh, the parents invite uh, the relatives, all those kind of people, relatives, sisters, whatever, their fellow rich men and so on, to a party, to a party where Romeo and Juliet met for the first time, where Romeo met Juliet, the party was supposed to take place. And that's when Wallace and us became to compromise and said, we shall present the Romeo and Juliet in our African version. And here we started.
compare her face with all that I'll show. And I'll make you think you swan a pro. I will go along. Let's say such a vision. But you rejoice. It's plain of my own.
prophecy, it will stop when and how and why. So many times you know everything that is against us, but we never know what we are for. That is complaining about what is against them. Leaders complain about what is against them. And everything is against them. The past, the present is against them. But they don't know what they are for in the future. So they decided to mount a game and calculate the build a monument that they will always remember the blood that put them together. So, so when you look at Uganda, like all these events from the past didn't manage to unite. What do you think will be in store for the future? Good question, but very difficult to answer. The future. We have leaders who dream the past, who dream where we are. Very few dream for us tomorrow. You only dream for tomorrow when you love the people you want to go with tomorrow. And if that's not the case, we are doomed. We will be doomed. We need dreamers. We need music of dreams. Tomorrow, what shall we be? We need people we have to look up to. We don't have people to look up to. None. We are not proud of being Ugandans. We can't say, I am a Ugandan, I don't do that. I was in America once upon a time and the Ugandan told me that when an American gets you a policeman, when you are speedy, get out your passport, give it to him with 10 or 20 dollars in it. <laughs> Stupidly I did. <laughs> And the guy looked at me and said, where are you from? I was afraid to tell him I was from Uganda. I told him I'm from Africa. <laughs> and he said, boy, this is America. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. Get out of here. our own country. Thank you for coming back. And when they come back, we shall task them to do what we have failed to do because of their skills, expertise. But they come back in love. Once they know we love them, their parties love them, their tribes love them, the Romeo and Juliet type of love. The blood of them too, that put them together, they will come back. Once they know we hate them, and we still hate each other, they will not come. They will stay there suffering, slaving for you, slaving themselves to death. Let's go to Europe, they are in Europe. 
Dead man. Everywhere they are scattered. I found one in a bus in London, a woman who didn't know I knew Uganda. And he was, she was saying she was not eating sausages no more because of cleaning your old man. Whichever sausage she made, I don't know. <laughs> Let's go to Europe and get them back. <laughs> That time the robots will be here asking no transport, asking no data, asking no airtime. The robots will be serving us. We have to go there because change is the only permanent thing in life. We shall have to go to the robot era. I may not be here, but wherever I will be, in the grave, my bones will shake and say, ah, that is the country in which we all wanted to say. I am a Ugandan. Hmm? We don't do that. We join now when everybody is here. Our legend musician, Yumi Masekeya, former husband of Miriam Makeba, those two fought so much for South Africa to get rid of Obekai. He sings that. He wants to be there when we have got rid of everything. Our poverty, our abuse of human rights, our abuse of everything. And now, when all are here, those from America, we shall come and say, send us, because his song says, send me. Abaganda, Abaganda, Tinjagara Kuitika, Mututiki, Mututiki, Tugede, Tukore. He said, send me by you a second. Yeah, thank you very, very much. Such a wonderful audience. Sit trust, glory, I'm only in Latin. 